you're a real estate agent, I appreciate it. Cause sometimes I'm kind of hard on real estate agents too. Cause you know, a lot of y'all are messing up if we're just shooting straight, you know, some of y'all are not focusing on what the clients need. Uh, some of you are focusing on your pocketbooks. I understand it. I got a family to feed too. So I'm not knocking you. I'm just telling you that's been my problem. And I'm very vocal about it. Right. Well, recently the department of justice shared some of my concerns with the national association of realtors. <gasps> I know, I know the big thing they were talking about was antitrust claims, which is this thing about our commission. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Turn it up, turn it up. Welcome to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. The tides are turning, the time is now. You're home for the mindset, methodology, and tools needed to invest in foreclosures. Don't you dare buy a house, buy a deal. You need to get into this right now. Right now, yeah. And now your host, the Foreclosure Deals Coach, Donnie Corum. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. I am your host and Foreclosure Deals Coach, Donnie Corum. Recording live from our downtown Colorado studios with my main man, executive producer, and all-around badass, Mr. Jay Winston. Hey, I'm coming in. I'm coming in like Freddie on, man. I'm I'm, I'm uh, real estate games nightmare, well, man. I'm scary taking, there. And then the taking it over, in, bro. I don't so know. I don't know what's going on. But e- either way, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> nah, man. It's uh, what's going on, everybody? It's, it's, it's a good week, man. Uh, it's been kind of rainy these last few days, but I'm trying to get out for a hike sometime this weekend. But you know, other than that, you know, the life of a real estate agent, life of a real estate investor, life of a real estate professional, just getting out and doing it. Living that dream, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, again, I, you and I both share one thing in common. We're real estate agents, right? I've been in the game for 15 years. You, you have been a little bit less than that, right? But, you know, I, I'm kind of hard on the National Association of Realtors. I'm going to admit there are two companies that I tend to be a little brutal towards. If you're waiting for an apology, keep waiting. Because uh, I ain't <laughs> But, um, I am a little hard on, on them. And the two companies that I, I give a lot of crap to are Zillow, Boo, and, Boo. Uh, the, and the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, which is supposed to be the board that protects our industry from would-be people who are trying to take out the, real, the realtors. Now, I, I am a realtor. I got a lot of buddies who are realtors. I still make a decent income off of my real estate business. I don't do as much real estate from a retail perspective as I did. But at my peak, I ran a team of 12 agents, did 125 transactions in my best year. I got to be frank. I love, love, love the real estate industry. You know, so if you're listening to the show and you're a real estate agent, I appreciate it because sometimes I'm kind of hard on real estate agents too, because, you know, a lot of y'all are messing up if we're just shooting straight. You know, some of y'all are not focusing on what the clients need. Uh, some of you are focusing on your pocketbooks. I understand it. I got a family to feed too. So I'm not knocking you. I'm just telling you that's been my problem. And I'm very vocal about it. Right. Well, recently the department of justice shared some of my concerns with the national association of realtors. (gasps) I know, I know the big thing they were talking about was antitrust claims, which is this thing about our commission where we have fi- we have flattened the commission and everybody's not supposed to talk about the amount that we charge for commission, but we all kind of know what it is and we're promising not to be antitrust and yada, yada. So they came up with this thing where they were going to make the realtors disclose how much the commission was on the buy side to the buyer. Like you're going to see the house, right? And, and you're going to see the commission on the house right next to it. And be, the reason this was happening was because over time, especially in recent months, the buyer side commission, which I can, I'll just tell you, it's not antitrust because it's my show. Okay. The standard buyer side commission for years has been 3% of the deal. That's just generally what buyers are expecting to make. But certain cities like Denver, for instance, dropped down to 2.8 a long time ago. From there, it's dropped down to 2.5. We're actually seeing two in lots of markets, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, the real estate agents are all up in arms about it. How dare they reduce our commission? We're working so hard right now. Well, first off, bro, nobody cares how hard you're working. That's number one, okay? 
Secondly, it's a natural market cycle, right? So the Department of Justice jumps in and says, you guys are doing antitrust thing where you're forcing commissions upwards on the consumer. And they were going to do this whole thing where they're going to find them and yada, yada. The industry went to bat and they actually, I'm, I'm kind of surprised by this, but somehow managed to push the Department of Justice back a little bit. Ooh. Basically saying that the department is not going to pursue other antitrust claims. They're going to just look into the rules a little bit more and see if this is okay. <laughs> and and I got to laugh because um, it just goes to show the power of effective lobbying, right? If the DOJ comes for you and you got enough money to go, well, hold on a second. Like, this is not illegal. Come on, man. You know, it, a little over anxious, man. Getting a little overzealous, bro. Chill, man. Yeah, well, what's going on, DOJ? Why are you bugging us? We're just the innocent real estate agent. Oh, man, we're doing what we're supposed to do. Right. The question we got to ask ourselves, is the commission practice the way it is today? Is it anti-consumer? What do you think, Jay? Do you think the the standard commission, which in a lot of, again, we, we have to be very careful on using the term standard commission, right? But in most markets, the general culture is about 6%, 3% to the seller side and 3% to the buyer's agent side for a grand total of 6%. Do you do you think that's consumer friendly? Does that, I mean, you're a newer agent. Obviously, your paycheck kind of depends on the answer to this question, but how do you feel we're doing as an industry as it relates to what our compensation is? Um, I feel that um, just like in any industry, there's going to be, you know, the um, the people that, you know, have their license and that are licensed to, you know, do business and represent people and things like that. And then you're going to have the people in the industry who have their license, but who, you know, are more professional and who are uh, kind of more of the, um, professional advisor take more of that role when they're dealing with clients and, you know, actually look to, you know, steer them in a direction that would benefit them long-term as opposed to, you know, just having a, you know, general understanding of the game. So all real estate agents really aren't built the same. And, they are. you know, I feel that, you know, for a good real estate agent, you know, getting things through and making sure you're, um, you know, getting the house at a good price and, you know, taking care of your inspections and, you know, do it, you know, just doing everything a, a competent real estate agent is supposed to do. I feel like 3% or, you know, whatever, you know, people are standardly or non-standardly, you know, charging uh, would be, you know, uh, that would be reasonable. But at the same time, if you're somebody who can, you know, can't even stay in contact with the title company and um, you're just, you know, just pay, just pay more, just pay more just pay more to get the house, just pay, just have an appraisal gap, just do whatever you can to get the property right. as opposed to, you know, having a little bit more of a long-term eye for that person's financial future. Then, you know, having anything that could be considered standard or, you know, customary might not be the best thing because it's like, why would I cus pay you customary for less than, you know, customary service or what I should expect from somebody in your position. So well, I agree with that. I think adding on to that is you mentioned proper representation and helping them out. It's very, so you got two sides of the transaction. Okay. Let's right. start on the seller side, right? So you got 6% commission. It's a co-op commission. For those who know how this works, if you're just getting your license or if you're, you know, you don't, uh, you'd be shocked how many people have a real estate license, don't quite understand how commission works. So let's explain that out. You get 6% total commission that the seller agrees to pay. 3% of it under the standard agreement goes to the seller's broker. So the seller's agent keeps 3% of the deal. And the other 3% of it goes to the buyer's agent or the person that brings the buyer to the deal, right? And that's just kind of how things have gone for a very long time. The argument that this is making is that the they were misrepresenting buyer brokers were saying, well, I work for you for free. Like, so when you hire a buyer's agent, you're not paying me for it. It's, it's true in the sense that you're not writing the check to the buyer's agent, but it's not true in the sense that the seller is absolutely setting their purchase price based on the total amount of commission they got to pay. Right. Right. So it was a misrepresentation across the board in the industry. And now we have to go into what is the representation profitable for the seller? Well, let's start on the sell side. Houses right now and for quite some time now have been selling in a matter of hours. 
right? In certain markets, not everywhere, but in certain markets, the house is selling for a, in a matter of hours. If you got a $300,000 house and you're the selling agent and you're going to make 3% on the deal and your job involves putting it on the market, so data entry, I can get a listing entered and I'm not good at it, but let's say 20, 30 minutes, I can get a listing entered, okay? Data entry, a little bit of negotiation with multiple offers, and you're going to make $9,000 for that, 3%. Does that seem fair and equitable? I don't know. Like, I mean, here's the thing. Like, it, it, just because it's sold fast, should we be compensated less as agents? No, I'm not making that argument. I'm just saying it's tough to justify $9,000 for three days' work, if even that. Right? So the solution has been, and you've seen a lot in this market right now, flat fee listing services are popping up all over. This happens every time the market is hot, where everybody is saying, well, don't pay the standard 3%. I'll list it for 1%. Or in certain cases, they're offering to do a flat fee, $1,500. I've seen $3,500. It all depends on the market that you're in. But now flat fee is popping up because they're arguing that you don't need a full service broker in a market that's operating as fast as it is right now. The DOJ is arguing that the commissions should exclude that from the pricing and just be paid separately by the buyer was the original proposal that you should decide how much you're going to pay in commissions. But the problem with that is if you give the buyer the option to pay a lower commission, how much do you think they're going to offer? Nothing. (laughs) Yeah. As long as they can. Right. So that's probably not going to work either, right? So on the sell side, it's been very difficult because they're selling fast. It's been very difficult to justify our fee. And as a result, discount brokers are popping up all over. On the buy side, and I see this a lot online where they're saying, you know, buyer's agents are working harder than ever, low inventory, multiple offers, got to show a client 30, 40 houses just to get one. We should be paid more for the service we're offering the industry right now, not less. And it's a valid argument to some degree. You're putting in more hours for less pay than ever. But here's the retort on that. Are you representing your buyers to the best of your ability? And the moment the conversation of appraisal gap kicks in, I'm going to have to say no. Like, I'm going to have to say that the moment the buyer's agent is advising their clients to overpay what the market price of a property is, regardless of the situation they're in financially, I'm going to make the argument that you should not be advising that properly. So as long as that's happening, one can make the argument that the commission on the buy side should also be challenged, right? And the seller who pays the commission is arguing that, well, hell, the house is going to sell whether I offer 3% or 1%. So why would I pay 3%? Right. And as a guy who sells a lot of houses, I feel you. Hi, this is Donnie Corum, your foreclosure deals coach. It's important to have good credit when you're buying a foreclosure. A lot of people think you can come in with bad credit, but the fact of the matter is you need pretty stable credit scores to buy a foreclosure deal. So how do you find out how to increase your credit? Well, there's tons of credit repair agencies out there and multiple formulas, but one thing we found that works is reporting your monthly rental payments to the credit bureau. We partner with RentReporters.com, the leading provider of adding your payment history direct from your landlord onto your credit bureau scores and it helping people to boost their scores up to 40 points in as little as 30 days. So to get started, I want you to head on out to www.ForeclosureDealsCoach.com. Now that's a messenger bot and you're going to use the keyword rent to get more information about Rent Reporters and how you can boost your credit score by getting getting your rental reported to the credit bureaus. Once again, Donnie Corum, your foreclosure deals coach. Check it out. Right? We've structured it so we're paying less a commission than we ever have and selling more houses than we ever have. So at this juncture, it's in our best interest to reduce the commission. And they're selling anyway, despite all of the... Every now and then, an agent will act out, and this is acting out because you can't say this, but I actually got feedback that said, I would have showed the property, but you're only offering 2% commission. I won't work for 2% commission. Hmm. And that's exactly what this DOJ suit is about. Deciding what house you're going to show your clients based on how much you're getting paid to do it. You just can't do that. 
it, it goes against all the rules. You know, our ethics says that we're supposed to show the property regardless of compensation. Okay. And the DOJ is arguing, rightfully so, that um, real estate is central to the American economy and consumers pay billions of dollars in real estate commissions. We cannot be bound by a settlement that prevents our ability to protect competition in a market that profoundly affects um, America's financial well-being. And I agree with that. The Department of Justice, the idea is to protect against antitrust. It's uh, if, you know, T-Mobile and Verizon want to merge, Department of Justice, antitrust kicks in and says, is this a good idea uh, for the consumer? Or will prices go up too high if we allow for this to happen? And a lot of times they restrict it. Now, the capitalist side of me says, leave us alone, right? We should charge whatever we can get away with. But the DOJ stopped in and said that we just, we, we're not going to do this right now. We're going to do some more research on whether or not this is fair. Okay. How does this impact you as a real estate investor? Well, I can tell you that because commissions are a large part of why the economy has gone up so high, the, you have people driving the market. We don't want commissions to drop down to zero. Like as financially beneficial as it might seem, let me tell you, if you lose your sales force as a real estate investor, that's going to be a huge problem. Okay. So we do not want them to go away completely. Do we want it to be cheaper? Sure. But we always want it to be cheaper, right? You're always looking for ways to cut costs. As a real estate investor, one of your primary costs, if you're flipping a house, one of the highest dollar costs of flipping a house is going to be the commission. Right. I mean, it's going to be pretty close. I mean, the, the rehab is, is stupid expensive, depending on the house, too. But the cost that you can guarantee is going to be relatively high. You know, 6% of the transaction, if you're paying the normal rate, is the commission. When you're looking at that $300,000 house, we use an example all the time that 6% works out to $18,000 that you're going to pay out commissions on the deal. So a lot of people can't flip a house because if you don't buy it well enough to pay the commissions on it, that could eat up all your profitability right there. Right. And the agent commission's locked in, you know? So, you know, what, what's the solution here? Well, I do believe that there needs to be some kind of correction to the real estate market. I do believe there has to be something, but I believe it should be handled at the consumer level. I'm not, I'm not 100% certain I want the Department of Justice involved in my, my daily life at all. I'm, I'm certain, for though, that the NAR has got to be put in check at some point. You know, and if the DOJ is the right person to do it, that's great. You know, but I think the National Association of Realtors has not been deliberately encouraging antitrust, but in, in a lot of ways has created an antitrust thing where the broker commission is sort of fixed across market when the harsh reality is it should be variable everywhere, depending on how hard it is to buy or sell a house, you know, and it should be up to the consumer whether they want to pay that fee or not. The answer today is consumer doesn't want to pay anything at all and probably shouldn't have to. You can go on Zillow, find the house. And listen, I hate Zillow as much as the next guy, but the reality is the listings are on Zillow, right? So if you really want to find a house for sale right now, you used to need an agent. But today you can Zillow the zip code you want to buy in. You'll find all the listings, yep, right? You can actually get more data about that property today than, than you could ever get, that you've ever been able to get. It's, just, it's right there. It's available. It's at your fingertips, right? So that has devalued the, the agent a little bit. We just don't need them as much for the data that we once depended on them for. Is it good or bad? That's not for me to decide. Not for me to decide whether it's good or bad. You know, as a person who loves the industry, sure, I, I, I see the problem with it. As a person who believes in capitalism, it's going to happen. Things are going to get cheaper. You know, that's just that's just how it's going to be. As we we rid the system of inefficiencies, you're going to find that prices of things that used to be high high service activities are not going to be as required. You know, so we have to decide what we want to do about that. And and my vote is let the market decide. If people want to get better representation, they will happily pay their buyer agent more for their representation. I got to be frank with you. When I'm buying a house out of state, we're looking at a place in Florida right now. I'm happy that the agent's making three percent. You know, they're providing me local market data. They're getting me inside into stuff that I just, I wouldn't know, you know, in Colorado, trying to buy a house in Florida. They're totally worth the higher rate to me, especially since I'm on the buy side and I'm not paying it. You know, um, but 
here in my own local market? I don't know. It's a tough call. And it's a call you need to decide. But I'd keep an eye on this. Check out the article. We're going to post it into the uh, the Facebook group, face, uh, Foreclosure Deals Coach Insiders, as we do each and every single week. Let's continue the discussion, right? Should the Department of Justice get involved with the NAR as it relates to antitrust and commission? Is it something that we need to be looking at? Because it's going to happen either way. And what's happening now is just a natural reaction, which is commissions have gone down because the agent is just less valuable. Is that trend going to continue? I think it might. I think we're going to see commissions go down. I am certain it's very difficult for a seller to justify the full boat commission in most markets right now. And on the buy side, the seller is going, well, if I can get the house sold, I've seen builders, brand new homes in my market with 1,500 in commission on a $400,000, $450,000 house. We're not even talking 1%. Talking 0.3%. And the builder's attitudes are like, well, don't sell it then. We'll just wait till somebody else comes and buys it. Is it horrible? Yeah. It's bad, right? Kind of a dick move. But that's just, you know. <laughs> it, it kind of is. It's kind, it's kind of, it is. And I, I agree with you, right? It's like, that's just kind of mean. But on the flip but, side you know, of that, if the houses are still selling. Well, why do I need to pay you? You, yeah, you well, might I, I'll tell you, new builds used to be 4%. New builds were 4%. I love selling new builds more than anything in my life because I could walk in and sell a $300,000, $400,000 house and make 12 Gs. And it was the easiest transaction ever. No inspection to worry about. Brand new house. The buyers are always so excited to pay for a new house. It's like buying a new car. You've never met more happy people. You know, but, and it paid well, but it wasn't good for the consumer then. And it's not good for the consumer now, but the builders are saying, we just don't need you anymore. We can sell our inventory without you. And there's just no reason to pay a high commission if that's the case. If it slants the other direction, if houses stop moving, I'm sure the commission will come back up. You know, but until that happens, this is where we are. This is likely where we're going to be. And it's interesting that, you know, the, the Department of Justice, who, I mean, set up this whole fine system, where they're going to come after NAR, looked at it. Now they're rethinking it. Incredible lobbying. Like, I'd love to do that. I'd like to get like a speeding ticket. Like, and it's like, I get charged with it. And then I go back in and say, well, can we look at this again? Hey, man. Maybe don't you don't want to find me. I don't usually speed, you know, most of the time. So I feel like, right. come on, man. Just, just look past. <laughs> it's no big deal. I mean, you're such a good guy most of the time. Like, like can yeah. you guys just let this one go? You yeah, know, it's just, just, just. After they've agreed to find you. <laughs> yeah. That's how it should be right there, man. I, I feel like we're missing the mark. We should all be doing this. Let's rethink stuff more often. Fascinating time in the real estate market. Like it just, it really is. It, you got to be into this. I get, you know, this show isn't for everybody. Okay. Like we're, we're not talking crazy off the wall topics. We're talking about something I know and love, which is the real estate market. But I, I find the whole thing just fascinating that how much things have changed and how much they're going to continue to change. As as we figure out what the agent's role in this is going to be, because I, I just feel like it's going to continue to adapt. People are going to value the local advice, but maybe not as much as they once did. Kind of like your insurance agent, kind of like your travel agent. You know, it's nice to have them, but you're not willing to pay for it. So when you want to book a flight, you just hop on Expedia. You know, you want to buy a house, you may just hop on, God forbid, but you may just hop on Zillow. You may pay nobody, right? That's, that's the world we're heading to unless the market does a huge 180. Um, the value of the, the retail agent is going down. If you're an investor, this is good and bad. It means you're going to get things a little bit cheaper, but you're also not going to get the advice that you might have needed to make a proper investment decision. And that's what I, I pride myself on when I, as an agent advising investors, as I still do today, um, is that I'm, I, re, I provide a whole bunch of value in the amount of experience I can bring to the table. So I know that agents have a value, but if you're a normal retail buyer who's overpaying for a property right now anyway, do I need to pay somebody to teach me how to overpay for it? I don't know. Probably not. Right. I mean, it's a harsh reality, but it is reality. There's a pretty good shot. I just don't need that added data, you know? 
So that's going to be the challenge for the agent who wants to stay in the game is you're going to have to find a way to specialize in something. And one of the things we teach our agents here in town with the foreclosure does coach teaching is how to be an investment focused agent, how to differentiate yourself um, from other agents by specializing in deals, not houses, you know, and the agents who take us up on that learning have, have continued to grow their businesses. Whereas the agent who's dependent on the retail market and the referral system is, is seeing a slowdown right now. You know, it, 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 for me, it's kind of a no brainer, which side of that coin you want to be on, you know, but you have to specialize in something. So be a neighborhood specialist, be an investment specialist, be a something specialist, but I'm going to tell you much like, you know, a general practice doctor can make six figures a year, which is a great living. Don't get me wrong, but an anesthesiologist, somebody with a very deep specialty starts at like 300,000 a year. So that specialty pays dividends, get a specialty of some kind. And if you're an agent listening to this, I'd love to chat with you more about that. See if, uh, you know, coaching in the retail space makes sense. Several of my clients are retail agents um, who are looking to grow investment businesses. And I'd love to work with any agent out there in any market who's trying to differentiate themselves as a foreclosure deals finder and increase their business and prove their value to their clientele by finding deals, not houses. If that describes you, reach out, check out the Foreclosure Deals Coach Insiders page, join up there, check out this article that we're going to be publishing about the DOJ, kind of screwing up the NAR, but not really going through with it, and get your own opinion. I'd love to chat with you about what you think is going to happen next. I think the market is shifting, and we need to be out in front of it, as always. With that, this is Donnie Corum, your Foreclosure Deals Coach, thanking you so much for tuning in each and every week on the Foreclosure Deals Coach podcast. Keep it ear to the ground. we got some live events coming in markets all across the country. We're excited to come meet you face-to-face. Yes, discuss the coaching product, but entertain, educate, and ideally make some new friends and clients all across the country. Stay tuned for that. In the meantime, this is Donnie Corum, your Foreclosure Deals Coach, reminding you once again, don't buy a house. Buy Buy a deal. deal. Want more of the Foreclosure Deals Coach? Hit subscribe and stay tuned for more of the mindset, methodology, and tools you'll need to invest in foreclosures. Visit foreclosuredealscoach.com and text DEAL to get a list of foreclosures in your area.